Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our March 10th, 2021 planning board meeting. Will you all please uh, join me in our Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance Pledge to the flag of the, the United States, States of America, America, America and, and to the Republic, the Republic for which it, for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation to God, 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 indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you very much. Um, Surrett, will you please take the roll? Yes. Uh, Chairman Curry? Here. Uh, Mr. Prince? Here. Mr. McNamara? Here. Ms. Gannon? Here. Uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Zaberto? And Mr. Mattis? Here. Thank you. Did I miss uh, yeah, you did. I'm me, here. Ms. Nancy. Uh, Ms. Corbino? <laughs> and here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and just for the record, I have the town cell phone. If we get any um, text messages, I'll let you guys know. Thank you. Okay, first on our agenda is um, the minutes from the February 10th, 2021 meeting. Um, if there's no corrections or additions, deletions, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as were presented to us. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, our first project is the uh, Somer Sanitation Inc. And for the record, it's an application for site plan approval and special exception use permit for the improvement and additions to the existing transfer and recycle <clears throat> facility for the property known as 241 Route 100. Um, if there's someone here from that applicant that would like to give a brief presentation, then we'll turn it over to um, our professionals. Okay, uh, we have several people in the waiting room. Okay. Uh, would that be Leslie Snyder, Rich Williams, Andy Ch yes. Chung? Leslie Snyder. Leslie Snyder. Is there a Rich Colan Colangelo there? Yes. He's also part of that team. Okay. Hi, Leslie and Rich. Um, I just thought maybe you'd like to bring us up to date where we are, and then we'll talk to our our town planner and our town consulting engineer. Sure, good evening, good evening. Chairman and members of the board. Um, as you recall, we were last before you uh, last month and there was some additional materials that were being requested by the planner um, and the town engineer. Uh, we up, those included updating um, the SWEP, the environmental assessment form um, and the plans. Uh, we've. We've done all that. We believe they're uh, substantially complete. Um, and so we would just ask tonight to schedule a public hearing for your April meeting. Rich, do you have anything to add before I turn it over to the others? Uh, no, uh, that's about it. You know, just here, if there's any other questions that need to be answered, but like Leslie said, we're looking for the public hearing so we can move forward. Steve, um, you want to comment on on um, the responses to your your comments from Wood and Curran? Uh, sure. So we received a memo from them this afternoon um, that Three hours uh, ago. yes. <laughs> so we we did have a chance to take a, a quick look at it, but um, obviously there's revised plans uh, referenced in that document that we've not yet received nor had time to review. All right. Um, We're going to have to look at them before the next meeting. Yes. Right. I think Steve will agree. There was just a few responses. We still needed to provide a few more details, but I don't think they're really substantive in the sense that you can't schedule the public hearing. We will get yeah, those to you promptly. Exactly. And we'll and we'll get the revised plans out probably next week. So you, you, you concur, Steve? Yes, I do. You feel comfortable scheduling a public hearing? Uh, well, I mean, I guess with the with the understanding that we haven't had a chance to review their responses, the 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 letter again that we received three hours ago, um, right, uh, anticipates responses to our comments. We we need all responses within the next two weeks. No problem. We um, okay. as you probably know, in February we we got a detailed list, uh, Steve, from your office, and yes. we submitted that back. These were just the additional ones, which really weren't as many. Uh, we're pleased to say. So we appreciate that. We'll get that to you in the next two weeks. No problem, Dennis. Thank you. I guess I guess if everybody should feel comfortable if if, if we do decide to uh, schedule a public hearing tonight and then 
we're not happy with the next meeting, we can always continue the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so, Surrett, if you're if you have any any more com if don't have any more comments, Steve, I'll let Surrett um answer his comment if she has any. Yeah, mine is basically the same as Steve's. Uh, I saw their letter this afternoon. Uh, mine were more you know much more minor comments than would it incurrence. Uh, okay. I'm sure when I see the plans, you know they're likely to be answered. But you just uh, said yourself, uh, John. It's okay to open the public hearing, and if there are you know issues that there remain, uh, the board you know has the prerogative of keeping the public hearing open. Okay. So, any other board member comments? Um, a, a small comment. Of, sure. If you don't mind, um, it's not a question. It's just I realize we are doing this because the state required this change. Correct. Correct. That's correct. correct. Okay. Correct. And I was really overwhelmed with the impact it made on the applicant. I mean, it was massive. And um, they don't care. What? <laughs> they don't care. Well, they do care. I mean, they would have been more than happy to continue operating the facility. No, no, he's referring to the state. I think that doesn't Dennis, care. Dennis is I'm talking about the state. state. Oh, no. Oh, oh you're right. Oh. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just wanted to make a point that it suddenly realized me. Uh, you know, I'm getting involved in your business, which I normally wouldn't be involved in your business. So I'm really paying attention, and it suddenly occurred to me, and I, I can't resist this comment, but it's as though your business, is, if you compare it with a human being, you are the bile duct, and that's terribly important. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bile duct handles everything. True. Yeah. As it goes to its final end. Yep. And it's rather <laughs> important. I didn't mean it to be funny, but it, it really is true. And I uh, appreciate um, the business. I mean, we all should appreciate the business. It's important. That's it. Thank I, you. I, you've been in this town longer than I have, Nancy, but I've always thought since I've been in this town. We're fortunate to have that facility there. Absolutely. Yeah. We, you should have been here when I came, and that was when the rats were running down Route 100 because they sealed off the dump. You, pre you presented some quite graphic pictures tonight. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank <laughs> you for the. You're more than welcome. I'm glad I ate already. <laughs> That's enough um, to say anymore. If, I'm only kidding. If um, unless there's any other um, board member comments, then I make a motion that we uh, schedule a public hearing for our April 14th, 2021 meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll Thanks see you then. Much. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank you very Thank much. You. See, see you next in time. April. Thank you. And we'll get Bye. those uh, revised plans out. Yes, please. Oh, Thank don't, you, Rich. don't don't. Well, I have you there. I'm, I'm sure you thought of it. And this goes to everybody. Don't forget to change your clock Sunday. Oh, oh thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Lose we'll the sleep. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Now, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, <laughs> next on our agenda is um, the Fullerton Wetland and Water Course Protection Permit for the property located at 32 Mohawk Lane, and it's it's an application for the installation of an in-ground pool, uh, patio, and to relocate their septic tank. It's in an R40 residence. Um, I'm not sure who's here from this applicant, who to let in. Right now we have Rich Williams in the waiting room, Andy Chung, and um, someone that says iPad. So let's um, see who that iPad person I think it's Andy Chung. Andy Chung, at least. I think it's Andy Chung on this one. Okay, let's just see who we got so far. And I in the meantime, so. there's been nothing on the text messages. Oh, uh, Sarah? You can turn it down more. I'm not, I don't want to touch anything. Um, well, I let these guys in, but they don't seem to be showing up here. Uh, do we have Andy Chung here? I'm here. We have the A. We, we can yes. hear you. And do we have anybody here on iPad? Yes. Who is that? Uh, Lenore Adams. Okay. Oh, no. You could put her back in the waiting room. She's the last. Okay. Hello, Andy. Lenore, we're going to put you uh, back in the waiting room. Okay. okay. No 
So Andy, do you want to just give us a, a brief overview and then we'll talk about the project, please? Sure. Uh, so the project is uh, a proposed in-ground pool and patio. Uh, it is owned by Eileen Fullerton. Uh, the address is 32 Mohawk Lane. It's right off of uh, uh, Tomahawk Street, Route, Route 202. So there, uh, so she has proposed, well, I'm, I'm proposing a 15 by 30 foot in-ground pool and a patio surrounding the pool. Uh, as part of my design, uh, well, as part of uh, the uh, part, one of the necessary items, there's an existing septic tank behind the house. And in order for, in order for us to put a pool and a patio there, that septic tank will have to be moved. Uh, and what I have proposed is that septic tank be moved towards the north to the side of the house. Uh, I followed all of the town setback uh, requirements, the 15 foot offset to the property line um, and the 10 foot offset uh, from the septic line to the edge of the pool and all of the Board of Health required setbacks, uh, including the 20 foot setback from the existing leach line uh, and the 10 foot setback from the moved, uh, uh, the moved septic tank. In addition to that, uh, the runoff from the patio was going to be directed via trench grate around the perimeter of the patio. So that's going to flow into a pipe, uh, which would then go into a three by 20 uh, by one foot deep bioretention system that's downhill from there. And that's to prevent, uh, you know, so all of the water that's collected from the patio will go into this little bioretention system. Uh, majority of it will perk into the soil and then whatever doesn't perk into a soil, there'll be a gravel emergency overflow that will go into the existing drainage way. Um, Would you like to share your screen so that everybody can see? Uh, I, if, if you think we're looking at, we, we can't see what you're, if you're, we're not, it's not sharing now. Did you I, mean to? Um, uh, I had sent out plans to everyone either via thumb drive or CD. If you don't have it, I don't know if I, well, I guess I can share the screen. I oh, just for the benefit of people at home too. Yeah. Um, uh, does that, does that work? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, That's you perfect. Thank you. All that right. way everybody can see. Good. Um, can you see my, my, I guess you can't see my cursor. We can see your cursor. Yeah. Oh, see okay, it. great. Okay. So. Uh, where my cursor is, that's where the existing septic tank is. Okay. Uh, so you can see, uh, obviously, if we keep it there, the pool can't be there. So right. what I did was I took this septic tank and I moved it over here up to the north. Got it. Okay, so that line comes from the back of the house. It will go into our new, our, our moved septic tank. And then the outlet of that will follow this line down here into the existing junction boxes, into the existing leach field. So I'm not touching the, the junction boxes. I'm not touching any of the existing leach field. Uh, so the placement of the pool is actually, you know, so I followed all of the Board of Health requirements. It's 20 feet away from these existing leach lines. Here's the property line right here. So I have a 15 foot offset to the property line uh, for both the patio and for the, and for the edge of the septic tank. So uh, I think I've, I, I've met all of the requirements for, for property line offsets and board of health offsets. So around the perimeter of this patio here, if you follow my cursor, there's gonna be a trench grate. And that trench grate basically looks like, looks like this detail right here. So all of the water that might potentially collect on the patio will, be, uh, will flow into a trench grate. And right. here, here's the low point of the pool right here. Uh, it's going to go from the trench grate to this four inch schedule 40 pipe and that will flow into this little bioretention system here. And that's to treat the water that comes off the patio. Oh, uh, excellent. Whatever that doesn't fall, whatever that doesn't perk through here, there will be a gravel emergency overflow and it will basically overflow into this existing ravine that I'm sure most of you know as you drive down Route 202, there's an existing water course. Uh, that kind of comes down Route 202 here. Yes. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, the I've I've 
I've gotten uh, the landowner to uh, possibly agree to planting a couple of uh, trees along the side of the uh, other property here for for some for some screening as well. Thank you. Sure. Question. Um, Steve or, or, or Surrett, would you like to comment? Yes, but I, I was there a board member that had a question before I jump in? Yeah, I had one question that with the moving, moving the septic tank, have these plans been submitted to the health department and have they received any feedback? These plans have not been submitted to the health department yet. We're gonna need their concurrence before we can approve this. Right, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You bet. Time is of the essence. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They, they, take, they, they have their own schedule. Um, so we did prepare a review memo on this. Um, you know, un unfortunately for the applicant, um, while it's a relatively simple project, the amount of, of earthwork does trigger a local stormwater pollution prevention plan. Uh, requirement uh, because the work is within the wetland buffer. Um, and so we provided comments around that um, just to make sure that they're complying with that aspect of, of town code. Um, additionally, um, I would just ask uh, that uh, Mr. Chung review the impervious area calculation just to make sure he's picking up the whole patio um, and provide some additional information on uh, the soils in the vicinity of the bioretention system. Um, this is something that uh, could either be proven out now or certified uh, later if, if the board sees fit um, to have it done that way. Uh, we would be fine with it being certified during construction with the understanding that that's risk that the applicant is taking on um, if there isn't sufficient separation to, uh, to groundwater or they don't achieve the perk rate that's being used as the basis for that design. Um, further, uh, with this work being done uh, and additional impervious being uh, added to the wetland buffer, uh, we would recommend uh, further that that bioretention system be sized to pick up some of the existing impervious area in the wetland buffer, whether we can pick up a couple of roof drains um, in that area that, that provides a, an appropriate mitigation measure for the impact to the wetland buffer. Can I, can I add something? Uh, rather yeah. than taking the roof leaders into that bioretention, can I take those roof leaders to a separate infiltration system in their side yard? Yes, yep. Okay, yep. and if that's the case, uh, it might be easier uh, design-wise to put, like you see where my temporary soil stockpile is. I mean, that's all usable space right there. I would rather, I would rather send everything to infiltration chambers um, Honestly, rather than even doing it with a, you know, it's it's going to be a lot more difficult to yep. to construct a bioretention along that that slope there. Sure. Uh, I you know I, I I would rather take the roof leaders and then take the patio impervious surface and 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 have that flow into a series of infiltration chambers uh, in their 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 side yard there. Are you so? Are you thinking about? Uh changing the bioretention system? Did I, did I hear you correctly that you were talking about changing the direction of flow from the patio as well? If, if, if I have enough capacity there uh, in, the, in the, the infiltration system, if I, can, if I can fit the infiltration system where the temporary soil stockpile is or in that area, I would rather, I would rather do the construction there rather than go down the slope and try to do a bioretention. Yeah, just, um, I, I don't see the, the well for the property noted, and I, I think it's in that upper corner. Yeah. Um, so just confirm your setbacks yeah. with that um, infiltration system. Okay. Especially, you know, with uh, chlorinated runoff, uh, if, if we want to deem it that um, from, the, from the pool splashing and, and things like that. Uh, my, we did have... Idea. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I said we did have a few um, kind of procedural questions just to understand dewatering and, and backwash from the pool, mm -hmm. um, as well as, uh, especially with the impervious uh, surface calculation, um, the nature of the pool cover um, and whether that needed to be factored in as well. That, that I'm sure is an easy question to answer, but uh, just wanted to make sure it was documented. Yep. 
Yep. And as far as the impervious area uh, in my my HydraCat output has the 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 area, but I can I can clarify that a little better. Yep. I, it looks like it's about five hundred square feet. Um, yeah. Correct. And I don't know that that is uh, inclusive of all the patio area, That's, even if you take out the pool. Okay. Okay, I'll clarify. I mean, I, I measured 550 square feet based on the hatch sure. um, on my AutoCAD drawing. So uh, that's fine. I have a question. Is that a buried propane tank that's going to be new for this or is that an existing propane tank? Oh, we have an existing propane tank that's uh, in the back, uh, but because we're going to be using it uh, for the pool also for the pool heater, and because all those lines are going to be in the way, uh, the owner wants to move the propane tank in the front, or I guess in the side in the side yard. Okay, and that will be a properly protected and treated surface on that tank. Y yes, it'll, it'll it'll be the same as what's existing now. Okay. Steve, do you have any more, any other comments? I do not, nope. It's Surrett? No, I don't have any comments on this. Um, do you, does everybody feel comfortable if we set a, a date for a public hearing? Yes. I don't, think it, yeah. I don't think it's necessary for a site walk, but I'm just one of seven. I don't or, think a site, I don't think a site walk is, no. no. I don't think we um, need one. I agree, so, I don't think we need one. No. no. So Steve, you 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 feel comfortable enough with with the little bit that they that he that he needs to um send over to you? We could set a public hearing for the fourteenth. Um, I think that there are uh, some pretty. I guess I would anticipate that public hearing being held open, um, pending okay. receipt of, of information. But it's certainly fine to open it if uh, with that anticipation. Well, I guess the SWIP is the biggest piece, right? The yeah. SWIP is the biggest piece, and it sounds like there's a a significant shift that could happen in the site plan with respect to the bioretention oh, okay. system. Yeah, right. Okay. So it, it feels a little premature, but um, well, and uh, we can we can wait. Um, I, I guess I, I would just, want to make sure that we have a final site plan before scheduling that that public hearing. You know, with with the prior application, there were you know minor comments and cleanup, but right. we understood where everything was. Well, in theory, you set the public hearing when you have all the information you need in, in theory. theory. All right, then if you want, we, we, we can wait. We can wait and set the public hearing at the April meeting for May. I think that okay. would be safer considering the okay. health department. All right. Yeah, right. Then, let's, real... then, then let's wait. We'll get this. Um, we'll be back on the April agenda and hopefully we'll have the, um, the new plans and, um, and health department and health department answer response. Yes. And hopefully we can get that done so they can be swimming this summer. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. You have any other questions for us, Andy? Uh, nope, that's it. I'll let the All right. know. Thank you. We'll see you in April. We'll do. Thank you much. Thank you. Um, okay, you can let um, Lenore Adams in, please. This is uh, Laura Adams coming in. And Rich Williams. This is um, the last Williams. item on, on our agenda. It's an application <clears throat> for an abbreviated preliminary subdivision for a lot line change for 1.439 acres from lot 17.12-2-5 to be added to lot 17.12-2-4. Uh, that the property that's going to be subdivided is that could be subdivided is located at 29. Route 116, and it's in an R40 resident zoning district. Um, Rich, you want to just uh, go over it? Because I, I think, to be honest with you, I'm glad we have Joe with us tonight. I think at this point, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think we're kind of at, uh, this is more of some legal questions need to be answered before we get to planning. Are you aware that he sent us a letter explaining the... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Explaining his decision. So he interpreted the right of way for us. 
Yes. And, and, and I think Rich saw that too. There he is. Correct. And good evening, we did. Um, and I will touch upon that in our presentation. Okay. Um, and the board would like to walk you through what we're proposing. So good evening, Rich Williams, Insight Engineering. I have with me uh, Lenore Adams, um, who's the owner. And I'm going to share my screen. And we'll start just by making sure everyone knows where the property is. Um, so everyone should be looking at the municipal tax parcel viewer for mapping Westchester. Um, obviously, we have Ivandell Cemetery, Dean's Bridge Road, once, uh, 116, and 202, which heads off towards the Stone House. This is the entrance off of 116 to IBM. You have Shortway, which is the first entrance into the Lake Purdy's community, and then Entranceway. And this is um, Lenore's property with the existing house on it. And this right here is the currently vacant landlocked piece of par parcel of landlocked piece of property, which is accessed by that right of way. So just, just to give you an idea of where the property is relative to other things in Somers. Looking specifically at the property now, I just shifted the angle about 90 degrees. So here's 116. And this is the existing property containing the house. And then here you have the current landlocked piece of property. And I'm gonna trace this relatively fast, just and sloppy, sorry, but just to give you an idea where the property lines are. And what we were talking about was, or the legal questions you heard about was had to do with a right of way or a deeded right of way that crosses over the neighbor's property, Margot Adams, which was originally created to access this back lot, which is undeveloped. And we are not proposing to do any development at this time. This is just a lot line change. Um, so we're really not affecting the status of that right away. And I'll touch more about that in a minute. Um, so right now you have our, this is the current lot configuration, the lot with the house, um, the currently undeveloped lot, it does have a tennis court on it, um, a little gravel access drive or walking path and a secondary driveway into the site. And if you'll notice, if I zoom in, what's really driving this, I'm just gonna erase these lines really quick. Maybe. As we zoom in, this is the actual property line itself right here. And you can see how close it is to the existing structure. Oh, wow. And because of the irregular lot shape and the proximity of the existing structure, Lenore is concerned that if she ever went to sell the property or her family did, it would be troublesome and problematic just because of the irregular lot configuration. So what she wants to do now is take the opportunity to just do a lot line change or swap between these two properties, whereby the house the house lot would contain all the existing development. And then there would be this still undeveloped landlocked piece of property. When we originally started talking about this subdivision with Roland and Surrett, um, we had come to the conclusion that because we're not seeking to develop this lot at this time, there nothing needs to be done with the fact that it doesn't have any frontage and we don't need to apply an open development area to this lot at this time. An open development area is the mechanism which would allow you to develop a property. One of the mechanisms, mechanisms which allow you to develop a property without frontage. Um, we also discussed the fact that we are not uh, increasing any non-conformities with respect to zoning. Therefore, we wouldn't need any zoning variances. Um, so this was originally perceived as a very simple, very straightforward lot line change um, which would hopefully be processed under uh, the abbreviated process with the recent amendments that were made by the town board. Um, but one question did come up today and or in the past two days, and that has to do with this deeded right of way right here. And uh, Lenore reached out to her attorney, John Malloy, and he actually came to the same conclusion Joe did, that this right of way does carry with the land. So it still exists as an access in the future, should something ever happen one day, again, there's no plans for that. But we are permitted to use this right of way for pedestrian and vehicular access to these two properties. So that would allow these two driveways to remain. Um, 
there are, if you look closely, there's um, an old patio and an old woodshed. Those have actually since been removed. Those did straddle the property line. So with Joe's recent interpretation, which again matches Lenore's attorney, we're hoping this is back to a simple and straightforward lot line adjustment. Um, just procedurally, um, if, we, if we are all in agreement that we're past that legal question tonight, um, I believe under the abbreviated process, um, we would need to request a public hearing for uh, under the preliminary code. And then we would come back and hopefully seek a, a waiver from a final subdivision process and an approval. Okay. And with that, I'm here to answer any questions. Well, you, you answered a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Try. Joe, do you want to comment, please? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, first of all, it's good to uh, talk with everyone, and I appreciate uh, the very gracious comments that uh, I've heard from people after my note today. So, um, on this project, I think you know Rich is correct. It does not compromise. This proposal would not compromise that right of way, should it ever be necessary in the future. There were some specific questions raised by, uh, uh, by an interested party, which were answered in my memo, um, you know, about various points um, here, whether it ran with the land, whether it was specific to a particular, uh, you know, sort of um, person and then that person's heirs. But I, I think that really is pretty well settled. The language establishes it in a specific place. Um, and I and Surrett and I also had an additional conversation this morning where we walked through other issues that that at first appeared a little thorny, but I think are are, are cleaned up here. And I, I, the only thing I would have come in the meeting suggesting, and it's and it sounds like Rich has already addressed this too is that we do take the opportunity to, because you're, you're now creating this larger lot uh, along the, the perimeter of the right of way, cleaning up encroachments probably makes sense um, as that ownership expands into that other lot. Uh, and it sounds like they've already done that or are willing to do that. So I, I, I would say with that, that you're, um, you know that that you you're not um, you're not causing yourself any future problems, and and anybody that wanted to use, you know, look, I could perceive some legal and planning issues with the development of that back lot if anybody ever wanted to do it, but they would be present in any event uh, for for this lot um, and this configuration using such a long right of way off the public road. Um, so, but nothing about this application changes those challenges should anybody come in at a future date. Joe, is, is, was, is the ownership of those two lots uh, the same person or those yeah. different ships? No, it's me. <laughs> same owner. Well, you go ahead. Both? I mean, I, I which two lots? I just want to be sure I know which two lots you're talking about. Well, the, let, let's put the land that's that that the whatever the 1.47 acres, if that's roughly that, that land which is being taken is being changed from the larger back lot land lot uh, ownership yeah, my, of that yes. land, uh, the yes, same I, person. Oh, yes. Okay, so that's yeah. the reason why you were able to build a tennis court on something that wasn't yours. I mean, oh, was no, yours. That's mine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. And, I, and, and I will say too, I'm, I'm actually glad you asked the question because there is a piece of what Surrett and I talked about this, this afternoon that, um, uh, that I should bring up to the board. I think we, we would want it um, clear in an approval resolution that once this lot line is moved this will be denoted as a as a single unified lot both as a development lot and and as a tax lot because i think that also helps solve otherwise you'd still have this the you want to make clear in other words that this is not just somebody acquiring 
um, a, a, another piece and suddenly that becomes this little triangular piece of its own. It's actually going to become part of that other lot um, right. because that potentially could be a problem with respect to the right of way if, if, you, if you left that piece being something that could ultimately be you know, just deeded to somebody else entirely. I don't think that's the intention here at all, but I do think it's worth noting in a, in a resolution that that's the intent, that it's going to be one lot um, merged. Any issues with that, Rich? Lenore, I mean, you don't have an issue with that, correct? No, no, no. Lots will be merged. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to ask a question in another way, twisted way. <laughs> I know that we as a planning board are not allowed by law to create a landlocked piece of property. So what we're doing here does not in any way, because I I hear you reflecting how compromised the large parcel in the back is for future development. We're not making that worse. Is no, that that's correct? exactly right. It's it it's it's, it's an whatever astute, it is. Right. It's an astute question. It, it's the right question, and that I think is the point of 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 clarifying that this application does nothing to um, to limit the effectiveness of that right of way to benefit that back lot. Which again is, as I said in my in my note to you all this morning or this afternoon. That doesn't mean it, somebody still, if they ever wanted to use it, would have to come in and 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 make the planning argument, an engineering argument, that they could actually develop that access appropriately. And and you know, and there might be challenges there. We don't know, but nothing about this application compromises that. That right of way remains viable for that purpose, and. And so no, and, and that is also the reason that I suggest that we just make clear that the little triangular piece that's being acquired does not carry on into the future as, a, as an individual lot. It's not just gonna be commonly owned, it's gonna be actually one merged lot because otherwise potentially, you know, that lot, you could make an argument is, is um, might be landlocked. I don't think so, frankly, but it's, just a safe it's a safe approach but anyway it's a good question and i think the answer is no and i think that's that's the answer we need and another question is uh, is there anything with regard to that that right of way that restricts what what can be built on that right of way i mean i mean there are right of ways that are basically for trucks to go temporarily on something but this right of way looks like it's going to end up being paved at some future date. Is there any, is there any description of the right of way that prohibits anything? Yeah, I would suggest uh, that the way it's written um, anticipates um, both pedestrian and vehicular traffic along it and does not have limiting language about how it might ultimately be approved. And, and that's why I mentioned that that it that's that's a property right description so so what i mean by that is th the the deeds um do not restrict that in answer to your question okay that's that's not the same as saying that there would be no potential restrictions or limitations on what could be done and what would be appropriate in the event of a particular application, just like any other application that you see, that they, they might, you know, there might be provisions of the code either in effect now or in effect uh, at some future date when they come in, which impact, uh, you know, uh, a right of way this long, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, some of the code or the uh, types of actions that Rich mentioned um, uh, that are sometimes used when you don't have direct access to a public street. So there could be limitations and, and, and one, but it wouldn't be because of the way this easement is written. Now I will say in the big picture with easements like this, when, when easements aren't very specific in terms of the intensity of use that can be, um, that can be put on them, 
um, generally speaking, th there's, there's considered to be no real limitation. In other words, if you don't say what they can't do, um, and especially if you specifically mention vehicular access, then it's kind of the wild, wild west as far as what you might ultimately be able to do to improve it. Having said that, there are general principles in the law that there is a notion of, of, of at what point have you gone well beyond the intent of the original people that put it in place. I think in this particular case, you, you'd have to go pretty far, really, to make that kind of legal argument. But just as an example, you can imagine that 100 years ago, sometimes people gave rights of way with, with no consideration that there would someday be truck traffic over it. And the easements will sometimes actually seem to reflect that. They'll say things like, you know, the, the Martha Johnson family will have the right to get to the lakefront by passing over my, you know, property, right? And, and if you look at that kind of easement, even though it's not specific and doesn't have specific limitations, a hundred years later, someone could probably come in and say, hey, this was never meant to be. This was a, this was a walking path. This was never meant to be that kind of path. But in this case, I don't think you'd bump up against that kind of limitation anytime soon. So they can't build a six lane highway. Exactly. Exactly. And that would be limited by by other considerations, frankly, more so than the deed. Right. OK. 50 foot right away. Yeah, it's right, right. away. Right. OK, I'm fine. Surrett, do you have any comments? No, uh, these things were clarified in the conversation that I had both with Rich the other day and with Joe this afternoon. So I'm glad uh, actually that that question was posed by Margot's um, uh, relative. So we could straighten this all out. Well, I, I have just one comment that's somewhat historic. I couldn't miss the fact that the uh, aqueduct runs north to south, 300 foot deep down. I always thought it went down Route 100. Now I see it doesn't. Uh, totally unimportant, but anyhow, it, of yeah. significance. Yeah. It was finished in 1940, in case anyone cares. <laughs> so, so Joe, uh, this is Vicki. So Joe, your, your comments in the email and your comments just now in answering the questions together, they all constitute your um, legal opinion on the matter. Is that correct? Yes, they do. Okay. And in the, um, the last sort of substantive paragraph, because it ends with, I hope, you know, helpful heading tonight, uh, it does state, and I just want to read this, because um, uh, I think it, it speaks to the, the issues of potential. The question of whether the 50 foot wide easement is sufficient to improve with a drive or a road at a standard which the planning board would be comfortable approving is no different than any review process you might engage in with respect to the development or a drive of a driveway or a private road. There is nothing in the deed which prohibits this access, but the development of the lots would still be subject to all the restrictions and requirements of the code and planning board review. In other words, it, where nothing is being granted or done or agreed to, everything is still subject to the requirements and standards that would be met if at some point there was a proposal to do a development. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So um, if we're, I would just suggest that since the beginning, the initial part of the first paragraph um, includes a comment about why you, um, uh, uh, Personal, My circum personal circumstance that maybe we just redact that out if the rest of it is going to be included as part of the record in preparation for the next meeting. Yeah, you know that's a that's a good point. Yeah, what I'll do actually is after the meeting, I'll I'll resend that email without the mention of my uh, little hiatus. <laughs> awesome. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and your comments were very helpful. And this was a very helpful discussion. Really appreciate it, Joe. Yeah, my my great pleasure. Actually, more important than, than this application or anything else is that you're in good health now, hopefully. Get I do well. appreciate it, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Get well. Good to have you back. We need you very much. You're, you're, well. the one that can, you're, you're the one that can turn mumbo-jumbo into um, 
uh, ability for somebody that that's smart like me to understand it. Thank yeah, you. you know, you have you have these experiences, and I'll tell you, little things like being able to give a nice legal opinion uh, make you feel real good about life. I so, bet it so does. Thank I, you. I bet it does. <laughs> um, the board feel comfortable with setting a um, public hearing date for the fourteenth? Yes. I think that's our next step, isn't it? Yep. Yes. Yep. That, that is. All right, I make I make a motion that we uh, set a public hearing date for April fourteenth, twenty twenty one. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Thanks. Thank you very and much. Just, and just to say, no comments in the uh, no messages came in in the text for this either. Oh, okay. Yeah, I keep, always forget to ask you that. Thank you. Thank um, be, before we adjourn tonight, uh, members, um, I just want to turn turn the meeting over to Sarret. For an announcement, please. Excuse me, if I could. Oh, ask. yeah, go ahead, Rich. Sorry, sorry. Um, just one more thing. Would it be possible to have a resolution prepared in hopes that if there aren't any public comments, uh, since this possibly is an abbreviated process, we could move to an approval? Um, I certainly I, work on that. Okay, I guess. Good, good question. You, good thought. You, you comfortable with that, Sret? Yeah, you, we can certainly work on that. Okay. We'd have to close the public hearing waive the final and right, then right. do a resolution correct correct yep if, if if they're able to we'll have one for you at the next meeting rich all right thank you sorry to interrupt oh, no problem no problem okay could you take down your your plan rich yes <laughs> thank you all right john go ahead sir okay uh i called john i guess yesterday or today everything's moving so fast uh, I can't keep track of it, but uh, I wanted the board uh, to know that uh, I am going to be retiring from uh, oh. my position as director of planning for the town, and that will be effective at the end of this month on March, March 31st. Oh, uh, my goodness. It, it may be new oh. to you, but this has been in discussion since last November with Rick Morrissey, so it is not news to him. And, um, you know, I, I, as I said in my letter to him, and I'll say to all of you, it has been my distinct pleasure to work with all of you, with the staff, with the citizens of this town for what is amazingly the last nine years. And I really? enjoy it. it. It really is. It goes very fast, very fast. Uh, and I have felt uh, you know, that I have kind of been in the right place at the right time, that my skills have fit what has been going on in the town. There's been a lot going on in the town over the period that I've been here, a lot of new large scale development, which is uh, particularly, you know, my background. And, uh, you know, I feel that it was a very good match. So uh, I feel, you know, happy that I've been able to spend this, these last nine years of what for me has been quite a long career, uh, I would say more than 45 years. It's hard to uh, even you know, conceive of that at this point, but uh, it has been. And uh, I just wish all of you well, and uh, you, know, you continue to do your good jobs and you have good people in all the places, the right places in the town with your consultants, uh, and all the people that come before you. So uh, I just, you know, I'm thankful that I was able to spend these nine years here. Wow. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna Thank miss you. you. Hey, On the Rick. other side, yeah. I'd look across and I catch your eye and it'd be like, you know, you know, you know, I'm gonna miss you. Well, the supervisor's well, taking it. Supervisor's so upset it. about it, he's not gonna, he's not gonna run again. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't think that had anything to do with it. Just, just coincidence. It's just not going to be the same. We are going to uh, miss you, Sarette. Well, absolutely. It's never the same, Nancy. But uh, it always, it always is good. Nobody is irreplaceable. No. Hopefully but nine years. Do good things, not because of health. No, not because of health. Wonderful. Uh, well, 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 don't well, ride any. Best. Don't ride any more bicycles. Yeah, well, I gave up my bicycle a few years ago, uh, though I must admit I still have it in the garage and I look at it longingly, but remind myself I better not get on it. 
Well, now you're stepping into the role of grandma. That's another great role. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that that'll be a happy a happy uh, opportunity. So I'm looking forward to that, and you know everything else that comes. So I've spoken to the staff in the planning office, and you know John, I'm sure will speak with Rick to find out. Uh, what the plans of the town are to provide, you know, planning services. It's not clear to me exactly what those will be, uh, but, uh, you know, he will make those arrangements and let all of you, you know, know what those will be. And I'm sure you will have very capable professionals to help lead you. I actually touched base with him today and he said it's on the agenda to discuss with the rest of the councilmen um, at the next meeting. There's a couple of different ways they can go. I don't know what, what, what their thoughts are, to be honest with you. But as soon as I do find something out, I'll let you all know. Thank you. Thank you. And the next town board meeting is tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. Yes. I think you're right. Yep. So. Well, good luck. Good luck, Sarah. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you for good everything. Life. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, you. And, a pleasure. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yeah. retirement. And I'm oh in the God. county, so you know who knows. You may see me around <laughs> up in northern Westchester sometime. Good. I, I love Good. this county. I love I love you know everything about it, and uh, plan to stay here for the long haul. Good. Oh, we'll Good. see you at a county meeting. That's could be. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, just another reminder: don't forget to change your clock Sunday and. Um, our next meeting is April 14th, 2021. Is there a motion to adjourn? It certainly is. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, see you next month. Thank you. Good night all. Thank Good night. you. Good night, Good night everyone. Good evening. Good night.